Hey guys, welcome back. Orbom here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content. Now today, people, today we're gonna be recording some Glaceon. I'm actually really excited about Glaceon. I love Glaceon. This is like my old Glaceon Greninja list that I used to play on the channel, uh, updated for the current meta. Well, I should I say the current standard. The last time I played this was before rotation. So um, I just like Glaceon. And every now and then, I like to I like to play a little bit of Glaceon here. And there. it's like my second favorite evolution. Um, so there we go. Before we get into the video though, don't forget if you like this content, if you like the channel, don't forget to support it by leaving a like and a comment down below. Check out our sponsors here at Guardian Gaming. They're actually hosting a giveaway on our channel for these next few days. Um, $10 on the website uh, for buying codes and stuff. They do sell codes and things on the website. Link is down in the description below. I do give out a code through private messages uh, to a random commenter that answers the common question there. It just leaves overall like a not horrible comment. <laughs> uh, today's common question of the day is going to be, what is your, I have two actually, I'm going to talk about the other one throughout the video, but what's your top three favorite evolutions? This is actually the comment, this is actually the question we asked on stream when we were recording this deck the other day, or streaming this deck, while testing it, and um, yeah, we get we gave a winner to that one too, so don't forget, it gives you a chance to win some Lost Thunder codes, as well as our giveaway, regular giveaways being the uh, $10, or the Guardian Gaming giveaway, of course, so yeah let me know in the comments below i personally really like i think my top three i feel like the third one changes a lot but number one is always flareon number two is always glaceon but the number three i'm not like right now i think it's espion but like honestly like it, it kind of like shuffles between a bunch of them i just really like glaceon and flareon the most uh flareon just is a little cuddle machine you know what i'm saying he looks like i could hug him while sleeping and he keep me warm at night and i love him anyways <laughs> that aside glaceon is here why, why am i playing glaceon well it seems that right now like like two three fourths maybe like two thirds of the meta right now is really weak to glaceon ability based decks are kind of rampant right now zoark uh being crazy right now winning both um hartford and anaheim i believe yeah in the same day zoark winning two tournaments um uh also there's cards like gardevoir there's cards like nine tails there's cards like lichen rock um there's, 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 there's like Bocephalon that you Oko. There's a lot of threats in the meta right now that are weak to Glaceon. So we're going to try to abuse Glaceon's ability here today. Uh, we have the attack uh, with Freezing Gaze, turning off the abilities of all active Pokemon, e of all Pokemon EX and GX as long as it's active, which is not too hard to do. And then we have Frost Bullet here that does 90-30. So it's like super mega Lando Bats because we're playing with Greninja today. 90 to the active, 30 to the bench. Really, really strong, really good spread. And then we have Polar Spear GX, which is 50 damage times the amount of damage counters on them. So usually after one Frost Bullet, you can Oko anything with Polar Spear in case you're not putting things in range. I'm choosing not to play Choice Band for a little bit more consistency, but if you wanted to, you could probably play Choice Band and like guarantee two KOs on anything pretty much uh so um right now i'm not worried about it because i am playing greninja but if you wanted to make some cuts for choice band i could totally see it uh, we're playing a 4-3 line of glaceon uh eevee not really no real reason to play four glaceons i found i cut it down to three one marsh shadow um i'm kind of back and forth about this marsh shadow this marsh shadow can disrupt while also giving you a little bit more consistency because it gives you a little bit of draw without having to use a draw supporter and then you can use a draw supporter after marsh shadow even use a goose mother turning marsh shadow as well but it's also a Pokemon that you could lead with that isn't Eevee. So it's kind of like, I generally want to lead with Eevee. I am playing escape boards in this deck. So leading, so leading with other Pokemon isn't that, isn't like the worst thing in the world for you. In our testing, when we didn't lead Eevee, it was just awful. But uh, I do really like it. It's just a really nice ability. So having access to it is really nice. One Lele was playing two. Don't really feel like I've ever needed to in any of my games, especially since we really increased the draw support count in this deck. So I'm just going to play one for the time being. Then a 2-2-2 line of Greninja, uh, we have Frogadier 70 HP, Frogadier does the 20 damage to one of your Pokemon whenever you evolve into it, which is the main reason why you're playing it. Putting that extra damage counters across the board means you can knock out babies on the bench combined with a, a Frost Bullet, as well as just put things in range of um, Polar Spear sometimes. And then we're playing um, two Greninja, which is the same thing, Shurik and Fury, but Greninja is actually one of the only other attackers in this deck, and there's a really strict reason for it. I don't... Okay, so you can't play Greninja's, uh, Greninja's Zoark, right? Excuse me, guys, I'm gonna cough real quick. Alright, sorry if I sound super stuffy, but um, I like attacking with Greninja because it has Haste hey Slash, which does 110, but more importantly, it can shuffle itself back in the deck. Also, Greninja really helps against these non-GX decks that, that can't Oko you, 
because literally you can just take one or two knockouts. Usually non-GX decks don't have any GX abilities we need to worry about. So you can usually take one or two knockouts with Haste Slash and then shuffle yourself back in the deck and just completely deny knockouts. Put this active and while you set up another Greninja, you can do some Frost Bullet damage. And usually uh, non-GX decks are pretty weak to Frost Bullet damage. And then you have access to a really strong GX attack in Shadow Hunter, which has 130 to your bench, to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which you can OCO a lot of Pokemon. It was really good against like Baby Buzz and stuff like that. So if you ever run into that, this is really good for that, for that matchup, right? And that's it for the Pokemon guys. I tried to keep it a little bit thinner, as, as thin as I could. I was playing a 3-3-3 line. I'm only choosing to play a 2-2-2 line now. Hopefully we don't have a whole piece of prize. But for the most part, we should be okay. As far as everything else goes, we're playing two Aqua Patch. Only two. I found that Aqua Patch actually is not super good in this deck because it is only a two energy attachment. It's good to be able to attach immediately. And maybe it's stronger now that we put in the skateboards. But for the time being, I'm only playing two. I might cut, I might bump it up if I feel like it's necessary though a uh, four energy lotto the reason why i'm playing four is because energy lotto actually uh, fits two roles in this deck you can use it to find dcs easier but you can also use it to find water energies easier I meaning you can actually cut down your water energy count a little bit to play more draw supporters uh because uh you want your water energy right away right so having energy evolution um having uh so that you can use energy evolution turn one so playing this is almost the equivalent of playing 11 water energies right because if you draw into it, you can usually find a water energy off of it. So that's why I'm choosing to play this. It also means that in other situations, if you need, if you don't need the water energy, you have a higher chance of finding DCEs too, because it kind of acts like a pseudo DCE searcher. So once again, I feel like it's really, really useful to have four in this deck. It's just because you need that turn on Glacier on almost every game against the right matchups. Two enhanced hammers, because this deck's biggest weakness is actually DCEs. Lele's and uh, Zorax and two it KO you almost every time. So having enhanced hammers is really, really powerful for you. Uh, four great balls. I'm not playing Nest Ball in this deck. I found that, like, even though I am playing Greninja, it's not a priority to ever get it down, right? So what, what Great Ball does for me is that it gets me Greninja pieces more than just Froakies, right? I was considering playing Timer Ball in here, but this is a little bit more versatile, and, and you guys know how I am with Clips, so we're not we're not doing Timer Ball. Um, <laughs> one Rescue Stretcher, I have four Ultra Balls, and then I, I'm kind of, like, testing out Copycat again. Copycat for me, like I used to say beforehand, is kind of like a fifth or sixth Cynthia. I'm playing two copycats in this deck. I was playing um, Tate and Liza. It seemed to just not work in this deck, so we're not playing Tate and Liza anymore. Like I said, copycat, it's not always good, but when it is good, it's pretty nice. So we're going to try it out. Four Cynthia, four Guzma, and four Lily. Standard stuff in most of my decks nowadays. Uh, three escape boards and four DCEs and seven water energies. That's going to be the deck though, guys. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple of games. So, my nose is like super stuffed up and I don't know why. I'm not sick or anything. I'm just like really stuffy. I think it's just because like, I, you guys know I have some sinus issues. It's really affecting me in the morning and I did just wake up, but it's a lot worse than usual. So it's like kind of annoying. But we got water boys. Drink your water. Anyways, let's talk. Um, let's have a conversation here. See, I increased the from six to seven. I don't know if I like it. I liked six a lot though. I know that when I played seven, I was actually whiffing it a little, or when I played six, I was whiffing it a little bit. But when I play seven, I have too many nowadays. So it's kind of weird. Cause you really don't need that many. You only need them to activate your ability. And we did lead, which is good. And his opening hand is actually not bad considering. We're going second. So I'll go ahead and bench this rookie. Hopefully he doesn't like Guzma me. But if he does, we can hopefully find the skateboard. One thing that could be cool in this deck is like a skateboard and choice ban and then um ooh this is nice and then uh adventure bag oh we're playing against gramble how do we fare against gramble the spread damage is really nice and then gramble can't oko um uh, frogadier or greninja so i guess we're gonna have to try to set up greninja as soon as we can it sucks that we're going second but he did lead with not snubble so that might help us a little bit and then we can probably marsh out of him uh he probably will have it I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if Marshall is like super good, like like early game, but I know Marshall is pretty good whenever they have their board set up. Um, but let's talk here. Let's talk Zoark. So this has become a hot topic lately because Zoark has been dominating lately. Like uh, not by lately. I mean, ever since this come out, Zoark has always been a tier one deck, right? And now that Zoark has won two regionals on the same day, people are really concerned about the direction the meta is going. Which, I mean, they have every right to be, right? Like, it's not like... It's not like this topic just came out of nowhere. I'm really debating if I should just Marsh Shadow first and then try to get a draw supporter. I think I'm going to do that, actually. 
Although there's no reason for me to play Great Ball if that's the case. So I'll hold on to Great Ball. Even though it's going to slightly disrupt my chances of getting a um, draw supporter, I guess I could also Great Ball for Lele. And there's a draw supporter, so that's really good. But I really like this hand for next turn, I'm not going to lie, because we have Energy Lotto. So I'm actually going to hold on to this hand the way it is. And hopefully I disrupted him enough here to where he can't really get out my cargo Ranguru engine going, as well as the switch. He's playing Choice Band, so he can hit 190 now. But, I mean, like, two Frogadier drops into an attack is, is a knockout on this, so that's pretty cool. We're going to try a bunch of things here. I'm not too sure how we're going to win this. I mean, other than trying to knock out the Macargo every single time. Um, let's see. He's in a okay, so he's just raw Ranguing, so the chances of him getting it is not as high. But he might just have Ultra Ball in hand or, like, that, that uh, Pokeball card searcher. Apricorn Maker. So he doesn't have it. He doesn't have Apricorn Maker or else he probably would have played it. He has a Striker though, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, so Zoar. Do you guys think it should be banned? I don't know how I feel about it anymore. Like, I've, I've been reading a lot of really good points. I've been always on the fence of, like, it shouldn't be banned. But there's a whole thing where, like, people are saying that a lot of the expanded cards that were banned and expanded was because of Zoar. I don't know if I agree with that. Only because... Like, a lot of the cards that were banned were banned because they were pretty awful in the meta. Like, they hurt the meta a lot. So, I'm not too sure where I stand on the matter. But, I do know that Zoark has been winning a lot lately. And, like, this random Zoark combinations have been winning. Um, it's not always random. But, like, Gyarados Zoark just won. And then we have uh, Weavile Zoark, Lycanroc Zoark, Guardi Zoark. Like, as long as Zoark has existed, it's been winning tournaments. So, it's, it's really awkward. Right. We got Ultra Ball, which is really okay. Actually, it's really good if we can pull off a... Oh, we whiffed. I probably should have Ultra Balled first, now that I think about it. Right, hopefully, we don't whiff off the Cynthia. We get Frogadier here. We'll drop it on the bench. We do have the 2-2-2 line, which is really nice. Uh, we'll put it onto a... Yeah, we'll just, we just have to make sure this is in range, right? Um, does it matter? It does matter. Because if we're going to Frost build, we have to Frost build onto that one because it's the biggest start right now. There's our DCE. There's another Frogadier. I'm just trying to debate where I want to put it. We don't have another Greninja, so if he does set up really well, it's going to be kind of annoying. Which he will not be able to because he's not in the car go down yet. Alright, um... Trying to think of where I want to put this. I guess it doesn't matter, huh? We're going to have to put it on this and then a Frost Bullet this one. It's the only one that's ready to attack us. And then hopefully we can get ourselves like Aqua Patch, DCE, Shenanigans, and a Skateboard soon. For now, we're just going to go ahead and Frost Bullet. That's now in range of a Frost Bullet if we need it, if we need it to be in Frost Bulleted. So we're just going to hopefully not be knocked out here, I guess. There's our Skateboard. So that's actually really good because we do get Greninja. All we need now is like DCE, Aqua Patch. If that's the game plan we're going for. Luckily, Greninja does knock out Granbull, which means he can probably take out two knockouts before it is. Uh, if you guys don't know, I, I did upload a Greninja list a while ago, which kind of like, it was preying on the non-GX meta because it was really good in the non-GX meta. He does have Macargo. That's annoying. So now he's going to just get Shrine of Punishment and take a knockout here, which means we have to draw really well off our Cynthia now, which is a little bit annoying. And by a little bit, I mean very annoying. Um, I might just get Lele and Guzma up the Macargo, honestly, and just knock that out instead of the... Um, so the Grand Bolt, it all depends on what we top deck though. I mean, we can't, I don't think we'll be able to pull it off, but I would like to knock this out. I might GX the Macargo, to be honest. And then, because he has no way to take a knockout on me the following turn, because he only hits 190, which with two, two turns of Shrine is only 210. So, uh, it's not like, we're not going to get knocked out is what I'm trying to say, unless he plays a surprise Kikui. So the biggest threat to me, why do you feel blur? Oh, to get rid of, his, get rid of one of his choice bands, I guess. I don't really know why he did that. I guess to thin his hand down, obviously, but like, what's he gonna get rid of here? Does he have another shrine in hand? <laughs> Just get rid of the bench one. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's not like that hard. But we did get a skateboard, which means we'll have a little bit more momentum here. A, an EV down would be nice too, so I can evolve it into a Glaceon and then like Aqua Patch and shenanigans like that. Uh, is he gonna ah, getting down Slugma is kind of painful? But like I said, this this has to go. This is the engine. So if we can knock out the engine, we'll be okay. We are gonna, he doesn't take two prizes though, which sucks. So hopefully he doesn't have any shenanigans that will help him out here. But we have to land like DCE and an Aqua Patch. Luckily we play a lot of cards that should be able to help us out. 
I mean, we're going to try it, I guess. It's, it's not exactly the safest option, but it is an option. We got it, but we don't have Greninja. Hmm, that sucks. Uh... Hmm. I guess we just give him Marshadow, huh? I should probably Aqua Patch now. I hate that I'm giving him a whole knockout here because that gives him that gives him a chance to set up his board, which is very annoying for me. And I can't do anything about it either. I can't. I couldn't have attacked him with Lele, man. All right, well that sucks. Oh, well, we just gonna have to give it to him, I guess. Hopefully, he can't do much about it. This is just so like, I guess I could have saved the Aqua Patch. I didn't really need to play it. I was just trying to think of like, what if he like judges me? But I just remembered these decks don't play judge. So. All right, so we have to find Greninja. We have to Greninja, we have to GX this, and we have to attack. Yeah. Oh, is he gonna build the Broke the Frog? Of course he is. Why did I do that? Oh, I'm such a messy person. All right, well, that's fine, I guess. You can just take a knockout here, it doesn't have to do anything else. Although, if I were my opponent, I would have tried to set up another, another, um, McCargo, but at the same time, like, he doesn't really need to, so. This is only taking one prize off of, out of this, and once we can kind of ruin the engine, we'll probably be in a much better position. Like I said, he can't Oko the Greninja, but now we have to find our only other Aqua Patch that might be in the deck, maybe, and go from there, which is not super great. And I can't even evolve into Glaceon, because it'll take Shrine damage. And this is a card right now. He's gonna take another prize, so I don't know, man. It's not it's not super good, is what I'm trying to say. If that wasn't obvious. <laughs> it's another DC. We're gonna go for it, because I think it's our only play. And I hate that we whiffed super hard, and I hate that I misplayed. I shouldn't have misplayed like that. We can't evolve. We'll just go ahead and just send you here and hopefully we can find Aqua Patch off of this. Off quack Aqua Patch Greninja, please. Uh it's always just so close, but so far. What do we grab here? Do we just shuffle back in the frogs? I think we do. I don't need the Eevee as much. I need the Glaceon and the Frogs. I can't evolve either. I don't have a I don't have a water energy, and then this is really bad. And playing down Lele is not super great either, but we're probably gonna have to play down Lele next turn, huh? Well hopefully he doesn't have another Guzma, but he's gonna get it, right? And I just lose. Uh, why do I always run into like my worst matchup? This has been such a theme in my channel every freaking video. I run into my worst matchup every video as my first game i don't get it like you guys see that weavile video it was the whole video oh yeah yeah um all right well this is why i was thinking i need to increase the aqua patch count for this exact reason but i didn't want to increase it because it kept getting like in the way when i played if he gets like a weighted empty his hand and a guzma this turn it's gonna be a problem and i think we just have to scoop but if he doesn't get it we still have it oh my god oh my god well we lose guys We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. <laughs> oh, that was really painful. That was really annoying. Like I said, like it pretty much does like it does really well against on GX decks, but we need to not whiff. And I didn't make that misplay by aqua patching. I shouldn't have aqua patched because we literally had it if I didn't aqua patch. But once again, I'm just it's just too tired. I'm just too tired. It's just too early in the morning for me. Alright guys, sorry for the cut, but we found another game. Whew, I'm just really I'm having a really stressful morning. But I, my my throat was really clogging up, so I had to cut and like go deal with that it was just being really annoying but we're here now my throat feels a lot better i have a lot i have sinus mornings i have sinus problems in the mornings a lot of you guys know this right, we had a pretty weird opening start but at least it's we know we have two frog ears in the deck so we can get down two frogies at least we have at least glacier on turn one just more which is probably the most important thing hopefully we don't run into garbage matchups or anything like that uh i don't know what this is going to be but i'm probably going to use copycat because copycat if it's not against a zoric deck usually doesn't draw you more than six anyway so i'm probably going to use copycat as my opener hopefully we can find a froki off this great ball i kind of want to save it but i think it'll be worth playing because uh yeah we got the froki dope so we know we have a two 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 froki ears we don't know how many frokies we have in the deck but we know we have at least two froki ears hopefully this copycat can give me a bunch of good stuff but let's talk guys uh i did cut last video uh, the last recording so i don't know where i cut out uh because i just don't remember do i want this in my hand not really um i mean i guess we technically don't draw into it but it's fine uh skateboard down in case of guzma i'll hold on to it actually all right so uh, uh zoark what do you guys think i know there's a lot of people like 
there's like a really big topic right now. Is Zoark worth banning? Should we ban Zoark? Ban, 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 things like that. And I kind of like, after listening to a lot of arguments, like just reading them on Verbank and stuff like that, I kind of get where people are coming from. And it makes a little bit of sense to me. It's just essentially all they're saying is that like Zoark has been winning too many tournaments. It's been tier one ever since it started. It's such a threat. You can't have free retreat, which is cool. It doesn't really matter because like, this is a one retreat cost, but it's still cool. Um, and Coco can't use his ability against us either, which is nice. Um, so I don't really know what to think to be 100% honest because like the, the people are saying that they banned cards and expanded because of Zoark, right? They banned things like Hex and Puzzle. And I get it. Like I definitely get where, why they banned Puzzle. Puzzle was too good in Zoark. Having too much access to your entire board state was ridiculous. Um, Hex, but the other cards, I'm not super, super sure about because like, the other cards were banned because they were just unfair. Like that was their whole mindset, right? If it if it if it can turn one disrupt you, it's not fair. So I get where they're coming from. But Zorak has been like just random combination of Zorak has been winning so much. Like just Gyarados Zorak just won a regional. Literally just won a regional. Gyarados Zorak, which is cool. It, it was a really cool idea. But it's the fact that like if you throw in Zorak with any combination of Pokemon, you should probably win, honestly. Like it's just that ridiculous nowadays. So I'm not too sure if I think Zoark should be banned, but there's a lot of people that think that, and I want to know your opinions because I can definitely see where they're all coming from. All right, so the only abilities we turn off right now are Zero Aura, which is a little bit threatening. I kind of need to target down those Zero Auras for damage. Uh, there's an Aqua Patch, not super useful right now. Throw this down for free retreat. All right, let's go ahead and draw some more Frogadiers and Frogs and Frogadiers and Frogs. Enhanced Hammer doesn't matter this matchup. Uh, we have to use Lele next turn. We'll throw an Eevee down for now, I guess, because that's like an Aqua Patch target if we manually evolve it. All right, so 30 damage onto this means I hit it for 150, which is not super great. Um, uh, okay, he's just on a scoop. Never mind then. Moving on to the next game. Um, I was trying to just like figure out where I'm going to put my damage, but I definitely want to put them all on like zero aura so I can put them in range of GX attacks if I need to, in case he sets up too many energies on one zero or I guess he could technically set up two energies, uh, two zero ores on one turn. So that wasn't like super great for us, but it's fine. I won the coin flip. You know what I want to try? Like some, like some Glaceon, some Glaceon Lycanroc, because usually you don't have time to use Guzmas in this deck. So that could be interesting. His opening hand is like super mega whack. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, we get to turn one Lily for a lot, which is cool, but I would have to lose these three or what I top deck. We'll see what happens. We're going first, which is strong. Like, Leishan always wants to go first. What are we playing against? What is this? What is happening? I don't understand life. <laughs> I guess I'll hold on to a Guzma just in case. What's our Greninja line like? We have the entirety line, which is good. All right, cool. We have the Lily for sure this turn. Actually, I didn't even see if my uh, Lele was in the deck. We Great Ball first in case we get the Lele. We did not, but we did get another Eevee. We can throw that down real quick. I guess I'm holding on to Enhance Hammer because I think Wigglytuff plays DCs. I don't really know, honestly. I don't know what's happening, but uh, we're going to go ham right now and get ourselves a Lily. Yeah, I don't know what we're playing against, guys. I do apologize that it's not super meta. I mean, we were just playing against Zero Aura. Zero Aura is not bad. So, like, I was hoping to see much, nothing but good cards. Also, hopefully nothing but, like, the card, the decks I'm trying to target. I don't know why, but, like, with Weavile the other day, I just in general, lately when I play decks, I'm not playing that my target, my target matchups. I feel like Pokemon is just looking at my account and going, ho, 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 I see what you want to do and we won't allow it. Uh, so Pokemon, if you could please stop that, that would be greatly appreciated. I want some frogs down. So let's see if we can find some frogs here. Oh, we got a frogadier, deer, but can we get a froggy? Like here would be like a good example why Nest Ball is better, but like frogadier, like obviously Great Ball has a little bit more versatility and like Timer Ball, I don't like playing. So there we go. We're only gonna be able to draw like three, I think, off Lily. Because we can play this, 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 leaving me with three cards in my hand. And we're gonna top deck something. Hopefully it's playable, then we can play four. But if it's not playable, then we can only play three. But here's why I'm not playing too many Aqua Patches in the deck. Like there's it's not exactly easy to put uh, water energies in the discard pile. A lot of people are always telling me, why don't you just play Volcanion? Uh the, I don't like playing Volcanion because it gets trapped in the active too easily. Uh, why is he switching? Um that's fine, I guess. It'd be nice if I had two Froggies down and I was able to pull everything off. What is this? Is he immune to water type? He's just playing Fairy Triumphs and Wigglytuff. I know that's like a deck, but like, why are you playing this? Is he just playing like a Fairy Challenge? Because he's like, it's not good for the video. But it's fine, I guess. 
Oh, it looks like he's playing real cards. He's just randomly playing a Wigglytuff. And he's playing Shrine too. He's playing a real deck. Huh, I wonder if Wigglytuff's like secretly broken. I just don't know about it. That could be a thing. Um, I don't want another Eevee down, but I might have to. I might be forced to play it down. Uh, I can't knock out anything this turn, ideally. Uh, unfortunately, I mean. I guess we just put it on this because it seems like a big threat, honestly. Uh, do I want a Guzma? I could technically Guzma this. If that was the case, I probably shouldn't have done what I did, but like, uh, I think we just knock out Oranguru here, put down range of Greninja. Uh, we'll drop this down, I suppose. It's not ideal, but it's dropped, so we'll do it. I don't want to put down Eevee because that's like bench space I don't want to take up. But here we go, like, this is where I'm talking about, like, where our, all of a sudden we don't have a lot of draw supporters. Um, and Aqua Patch is a dead card, too, so. I guess it's not super dead next turn, but it's dead for the time being. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just Polar Spear. We can technically Polar Spear this combined with Greninja, so, like, I'm not too worried about it. The only thing that sucks is that I really want to get down another Froakie, so I can a Greninja knock this out if it doesn't evolve it, and then um, a Froakie knock this out, Greninja knock that out. But this is why we saved in the hand hammer because I, I remember playing Ugly Tough at a Leak Tough, so that's why I remember Ugly Tough playing DCs. I didn't use the DCs obviously because it was a Leak Cup or not Leak Cup. Um, what's it called? Pre-release. That's what they're called. He also was playing this, which was randomly confused. This man literally just took his pre-release deck and was just like, "What's up, people?" So how much does this do? I think it's like 140 or something. Oh, he doesn't put me to sleep. We have Guzma, so I guess it's not the end of the world. And also that helps. <laughs> uh, who do we knock out this turn? We have Greninja, so it's not too bad. I guess we'll put down another Glaceon for sure. Um, do we just knock out this dude, or do we knock out like Larvitar? Because Larvitar is looking like a threat. We can do 80 damage. It's not actually not a huge threat right now. But it could be a threat later. I can knock out Coco, which is kind of a problematic with spread damage. I can knock out a Ranguru. I can knock out lots of things here. I just don't know which ones I want to do. But I think I'm going to take... I think I'll just take three prizes this turn. Just really, like... Really mess up my opponent here. There's no point in me. Enhance Hammering, obviously. we go ahead and Ultra Ball away. Mm, I guess we have to Ultra Ball away. Because I want to play another Guzma probably next turn. Um, and we'll get Greninja. And we will knock out Oranguru, so he has less draw. And then I'll knock out these two. And this will also give me a thing, so I might get a draw supporter off this. But I just want to take as many prizes as I can so I can get a draw supporter. And there it is. All right, cool. So now I don't really need to knock this out this turn, but we don't have another frog down. So I might as well just knock it out now, because it's probably the only thing that can maybe Oko me next turn. Um, so yeah, we'll just do that here. Still no frog ears down, but it's fine. Uh, there's a Marsh Shadow. So, like, uh, this is not like, I mean, we got to show off the setup, which is cool, but, like, it's not, like, an ideal matchup, clearly. At least we got our draw supporters. <laughs> we had two prized, apparently, and Marshadow as well, which is ridiculous. I feel like he's gonna, like, bench Lele and mess up my life. Uh, baby Lele. So, I have to try to win this game beforehand. But we don't have another Froggy down, so, like, I don't know. I guess two more attacks does technically win us the game. Uh, if we can Guzma. I mean, now we have to do three more attacks, but it's fine, right? right? I really need Froakie down. Can I get a Froakie down? Pretty please. I don't have any way to heal, so if he gets too much damage on the board, he just wins. Uh, so, that was my main concern. But we'll go ahead and play another game here. I don't know how long the video's been, because I left a recording while I went to the restroom, because I didn't want to do... I, I didn't want to, like, um, do the whole intro again. And I do have work, so I have to be ready to go to that soon. So I'll probably play like one more game. I'm trying to do the whole thing where I upload as often as I can for you guys. I want to at least have 10 videos so I can do 10 giveaways. Although technically like a couple of them are going to stream. So I guess we only really need to get like eight, seven, eight videos up. So we'll see what happens. I won the coin flip. And unfortunately, no Greninja lead or uh, Eevee lead. This has been happening to me way too much. I'm only playing two Froakies. So like the chances of me leading Froakie and not Eevee are fairly low. I, I guess to be fair, it's only like 50-50, right? Because we're playing one Marshout and one Lele. So it's four non-Eevees and then four Eevees. Oh no, the one matchup where I definitely need to have Eevee in my active. Oh God, it's f whatever. I don't need it technically until next turn, but it's still painful. 
that we didn't get it this turn. Uh, do I? Mar I think I marsh out of this turn like every time, right? But I don't want to lose these cards in my hand. Whatever, we'll just go in because uh, we don't have a draw support in hand anyways. Uh, yeah, I think this is just what we have to do. And hopefully, he doesn't have an hand hammer of his own. Please don't be prized. Oh, good. My, my heart skipped the beat for half a second. We lost a lot of good cards in the process, but we don't have anything right now, and I would like to disrupt them turn one if I can. We also don't have a... Oh, okay, um, this is all right, I guess. This is all right if we don't have our other Glacian prize, which is actually like kind of scary. It's also not good. I lied to you guys. It's not good at all. If we top deck a water energy, then it's amazing. But if we don't top deck a water energy, this is really bad, actually. You know, he has Cynthia. We need to top deck an Ultra Ball. And that Ultra Ball needs to get us Lele a skateboard water energy. Okay, good. He can't do too much here. Uh, best case scenario, nothing right now. Um, all right. We actually just lose, don't we? Well, we're, we're, I'm going to Guzma because I want this thing active. But that's all I can really do right now, huh? We'll enhance Hammer and Guzma and hope for the best. We don't have a water energy down there. What a pain. What an awful, awful time. All right, well, we have Glacian down. Hopefully he doesn't play Weavile and, like, mess up my life. That'd be kind of bad. Uh, we'll just pass here. And hopefully he doesn't have Lele or Zoroax or anything like that. Because if he does, he needs to play his own Guzma first. Which is, like, not the end of the world, but it's not great for us either. Why Why is this happening, though? This is ridiculous. Double Tails, oh, of course. Uh, all right, he has Zoroax down. We already lost two Enhanced Hammers, which means I don't think we'll be able to disrupt anymore. So if he starts damaging us, we can't do much about it. Um... So now we're just literally at the mercy of drawing cards. We have nine draw spores in the deck still, as well as like 11 water energies if you count the, if you count the, uh, um, the lottos. So we should be able to draw into them. All we need is a water energy and we can start doing a lot of monumental pressure in this matchup because we can GX this potentially. There's an Elm, which is not great. I guess we don't damage. I do, I do need to damage all this Orx though. And I would like to knock out Ditto, so. Rock Ruff and Zoro. So he can't use Lycan Rock on my Glaceon's active, so that's pretty cool. But does he not have another Zoro? Does he actually have two Zoro's priced? Because that's like super mega whack. Uh, but I, that's good for me. Okay, we did top deck, which is good. Should I get down Glaceon? I think it's just safer because I can Aqua Patch onto it later if I need to. So let me go ahead and just do this now. Although I would love to get Greninja, like in case he takes knockouts on Greninja. It'd probably be nicer for me to do this because it thins my deck a little bit. So we'll go ahead and just Cynthia here. And hopefully we can get a water energy. All right, we have two Lottos. Are we going to whiff? No, at least we did not whiff. All right, hold on to the other one just in case. You have a pretty empty hand. Uh, we could technically Guzma retreat if we need to. Let me go ahead and target that down. In a perfect world, we get Frogadier and we can just knock out this... Um, this is Zoark with a GX attack, right? That's like perfect world scenario. Because he's probably going to attach GC and like miss all my life. Although he doesn't do too much damage if he doesn't get too many Pokemon down. He did have Guzma in hand, so I don't know if he's gonna play another Guzma and start using his abilities or if he's just gonna draw a bunch with like a draw support or something and hope for the best. What is that? Devour field and he's gonna use Lily. Okay, so he's playing the draw supporter route. He's not choosing to use Guzma. Um he got the DC, so that's kind of whack, but it's fine. We need, we definitely need to find. He already he does 100 damage. It's so much damage. All right, we need to find Frogadier. We have a Lily. But that's all we have. Um, that's not great for us. Whew. So I'm forced to play a bunch of cards I don't want to. Just draw three. Um, I really want this card. Is it worth? It kind of is, right? Because we're probably going to... We have a lower chance of getting a follow-up play if we do this. I mean, we have a lower... We have a lower chance of not having a follow-up play if we do this. I could just Guzma and knock out Rockruff right now. But I already attached return, so we can't actually do that. So, never mind. <sighs> we don't have anything. Well, it is what it is, I guess. We can at least Frostbolt the following turn. This will always be 2 KO'd. We need Frogadier for this to actually work. But we'll just do this for now. We'll just take multiple prizes while where we can. At least we take a knockout on the next turn. So we have DC, we have Aqua Patch to attach on the Frogadier if we need to. Although I'm probably gonna Aqua Patch onto Glaceon and then Copycat. 
<clears throat> Although copycat does not give me a lot of cards. He can't use Lycanroc, so I don't know what he's doing here. I don't think he realizes he can't use Lycanroc. Oh, never mind. He just wants to attach an energy to it. Yeah, Lycanroc is very strong right now. Also, he, he I know he just evolved because he didn't want me to take a knockout. I'm very tired, guys. Please forgive me. Um, yeah, he doesn't want me taking a knockout on it. The plus side is that I can GX this Lycanroc. The bad side is he can GX me. So, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not super great for me still. So we're trading knockouts here, but he has the advantage. I would like to knock out Sneasel if I can. Another Lotto, not super great right now. I mean, we can copycat pretty successfully here. I could choose the Guzma. That doesn't seem super great. I still need to get down Froakies and Froakadiers. Uh, we can just copycat here for a good amount of cards. All right. We take a knockout. We can spread damage onto Sneasel. We got another Froakie. This also gives us Froakadier. So, and this gives us a, a draw support for the following turn as well. He's going to come in and GX me with this, most likely. So then I need to make sure I have another Glaceon ready. So this is kind of awkward. We have Copycat for the following turn. So we can probably take a knockout on this and then GX this, right? That's going to be the game plan. Because we hit this thing for 150. So one Froakadier drop here. Um, means we need to find a Greninja this turn, huh? So we have Copycat. And we still have a, like one Energy Lotto and a bunch of DCs in the deck still. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Because I'm thinking either I can find a manual attachment or I can... But I need to find Froakadier this turn for sure. Um, for sure I need to find Froakadier, right? I'm assuming he won't evolve this the following turn. We're going to put damage on this so it's in GX range. We're not going to let him use his abilities. And I want to knock this out because it's such a huge threat. So now it hits, uh, I believe, 200 right now, right? So he can take a knockout on me next turn if he wants to. Um... If I frost bullet onto it right now, I'm putting it in 50, which means next turn I would only need to drop. No, that's too much. All right, so we have to put the frost bullet damage onto you. And hopefully these two prizes help. They get us more ball switch cards, maybe like an, a, an energy. The skateboard is not great. Oh my God, skateboard. All right, well, it's fine. Okay, he's not going into Weavile, which means he doesn't have Weavile yet. So in a perfect world, we get Greninja Frogadier, and we take a knockout on this while GXing this. So we'll see what happens. And that would win that would win us the game, right? So if you get Greninja Frogadier, we win. We just have to find we have a skateboard, which is actually pretty handy because we can Aquapatch this turn. Um, so let's see if we can pull it off. But if we don't pull it off, I think we lose, right? I mean technically we only have three abilities down now. Alright, we got a different oh no, this is definitely much better. Alright, cool. Let's copycat here. We can off patch one. So now all we need to do is find a basic energy. Drop these guys. And then we can just copycat for whatever number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we got the DC we were looking for. We got Frogadier Greninja, so we just win, right? All right, perfect. Um, cool. So there we go. That ended up working out very nicely for us. All right, there we go. So we were a little bit in the back foot there, which is not great, but we still managed to win that game. So that's pretty nice. There's like some inherent consistency missing in this deck, which is the main reason why people play Glacial and Zoark. But we were still able to like, like, I guess maybe I should have just trusted the deck more because we actually did pull off everything we wanted to that game. Uh, so that was really nice. Like literally every turn went perfect every game <laughs> every turn i was just like stressed out because like if i if i missed one turn i lost but that's just like the weird thing about playing against zorak even if you have the advantage against zorak like as well as like abilities or types you still lose if you miss if you miss up one turn so like it's weird but we still ended up pulling that game out uh i could it's so it's so hard right because i don't want to drop the pokemon line but i want to like play more Cards? I don't know if that makes sense. Like, obviously, there's a whole thing you can play Ditto, right? Which kind of acts like a Glaceon, but kind of acts like an Eevee, but it doesn't because you don't have the ability, and that's way more important. That's if those of you wondering why I don't play Ditto, that's why. Because it doesn't have the ability that Eevee does, so it's more important. You have less of a chance of, leaving, of leading Eevee if you add more Pokemon that aren't Eevee. That's why I brought this down to a 2-2-2 line, for that reason. 
Uh, Aqua Patch, I can see being a little bit more useful. The problem is there's nothing I really want to drop. We had that awkward opening hand where we had to discard cards like um, like Enhance Hammers and Guzmas. I could probably see dropping a Guzma if you wanted to add one more card to this deck. What that one more card would be, I'm guessing Aqua Patch, but I'm not super sure. Aqua Patch just means you can set up more consistently. I, I, but I do like three escape boards. I would like it to be four as well, but space is an issue. Everything else in this deck seems pretty good, honestly. Like I don't, I don't, I like this deck a lot. It's a lot of fun. I love playing Greninja, so there it is. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this deck. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share, all that good jazz. We were chilling today, but it was a light, it was a good video, anyways. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.